evening. You're watching Left, Right and Center. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Well, three days after the Uri terror attack, India is still contemplating what its next steps will be. What is clear is that India is preparing for a diplomatic offensive, in particular with the UN General Assembly underway and Sushma Swaraj slated to speak there in a few days from now. Now, the question is, what else can India do diplomatically? One of the ideas that has been suggested is for India to come together with other countries such as Bangladesh and Afghanistan and boycott the SARC summit that takes place in November. That's a question I asked Afghanistan's ambassador to India today. And interestingly, he says it's something that shouldn't be kept off the table. He doesn't rule it out. The question, though, that we're asking tonight is whether that is a feasible idea and whether India should in fact boycott the SARC summit as a diplomatic tool in its armour. Well, among the other developments today, there has been a major encounter, another fierce encounter in fact, that has taken place in Uri. There are an unspecified number of terrorists that are believed to have infiltrated. Uh, the army is not putting a number on it. We know that an encounter is still underway. It is not over. Uh, there are possibly terror, terrorist casualties as well. Again, the army not putting a number on that just yet. There have been varying reports about that through the day, uh, but uh, the army is cautiously putting out statements at the moment. I think they're waiting for that operation to end before they reveal anything more. I spoke to Afghanistan's ambassador to India earlier today. Let's listen in. So thank you for speaking to us. Uh, today, President uh, Ghani had a phone conversation with Prime Minister Modi and condemned the attack in Uri, expressed solidarity with India. How much of a menace is Pakistan, according to you, in the neighborhood at this point? Well, Afghanistan, as you know, has been the biggest victim of terrorism in this part of the world. And we've been suffering for decades now. And we had told and warned the world community and countries in this region that Afghanistan will not be the only country to suffer forever, lonely. That others will suffer with us. Um, I'm very upset to see the spillover effects all over, including India. So we have to find a solution for the problem that has been there and it will spread over in a much more lethal way if we don't stop it. it on the Uri attack in particular, uh, do you believe that this could be a turning point in the way India looks at Pakistan-sponsored terror and the entire region, including Afghanistan, looks at terror well, from Pakistan. Well, I mean, there must be zero tolerance. It must end. We have seen, we have been seeing the signs of terrorism becoming much more lethal and becoming very systematic. This is a state-sponsored terrorism. It's no more an issue of non-state actors that we'll be hearing for a long time. Now, ample proof of this as state-sponsored terrorism and therefore we have to revisit our mechanisms that we've been using against terrorism. We have a global war on terror effort that must be revisited. We have to draw a line between a country that sponsors terrorism and a country that is an ally in the war against terrorism. So that difference must be made and this should be made immediately. And what, what uh is, according to you, then the biggest problem in this global fight against terrorism because it's astounding that in 2016 we cannot even agree, as, a, as, a, as the, the whole world cannot agree what terrorism is, what the definition of terrorism is. Doesn't the basic problem start there? Absolutely. We have been against the narrative that is used against terrorism because we see a blind eye being turned to countries that are systematically using terrorism against other peaceful nations. Therefore, the very definition of terrorism has to be looked at. We know what terrorism means, and we should not distinguish between terrorism in whatever form it is. And there should never be any definition that will call or that will uh, term a terrorist group to be a freedom fighter or whatever other label that is being made for those terrorist groups. Therefore, you are completely right that Terrorism and the definition of terrorism has to be de defined properly and has to be revisited. When you said uh, that there needs to be zero tolerance now towards terrorism after Uri and that the world needs to come together, what is the message Afghanistan would give to the rest of the world on Pakistan-sponsored terror, terror? Zero tolerance means because Afghanistan, particularly India, did everything they could to make peace with our neighbor. 
despite all what we did, especially in, our, in, in Afghanistan, our government in the last two years did everything it could unimaginably nibbly in the past two years. Yet we saw more intensity. The reciprocity to our peaceful effort was only intensification of terrorism from across the border. And you see what is going on in Afghanistan right now. Therefore, there should be no any compromise from now on. And we must send a decisive message that if one can do terrorism to others, they will never be free to exercise that behavior and there will be, there will be a strong reply to what they've been doing. How will that message be made according to you? Uh, how do you think uh, India and other countries, Afghanistan and other countries can, can come together? H how do we move forward on this well, diplomatic? We must, first of all, we must unite at the regional level. We are individually dealing with the problem of terrorism from across the border. Unfortunately, the unity that is required at the region, at the regional level, is not there. You mean South Asia? Absolutely right. Especially in our region, we have been divided in the war against terrorism. Unfortunately for our national interests, whatever interests some countries have defined them, we have to unite against terrorism at the, at the, at, in the outset at the regional level. And then at, at that regional level unity, we can go on to the international stage, to the United Nations, to the global community. We have to, we have to bring along the world community against a menace that is affecting today this region. And a state-sponsored menace. Absolutely. Yeah. State-sponsored terrorism must be dealt with. It's not, but my only skepticism is it's not like the world has not known and it has not seen the evidence of that state-sponsored terrorism. And the Mumbai attack of 2008 was perhaps the most visible evidence of that in recent years. And yet, we run around in the same circles all the time. Why will this be different? That is the you? problem that we are basically dealing with. And we have to ask this question at the global stage as to why, despite all the evidence we see, in Afghanistan, in India, a direct state sponsorship of terrorism, yet the countries in the world are not dealing accordingly. And that question must be asked seriously. And we have to draw a line also at the global level, between states who come along with countries like Afghanistan and India who are peaceful nations who want to make peace with neighbors and the countries that will continue to turn a blind eye. That definition and that division must be created now. Well, you've talked about regional unity uh, in, in South Asia and I would assume you're, meaning, you're talking about India, Bangladesh, Afghanistan certainly. One of the things that is being suggested after the Uri attack uh, is for India, Bangladesh and Afghanistan to come together and possibly boycott the SARC summit in Pakistan, which is coming up in November. Do you think that's possible? Well, you see, we have to make sure that we bring the maximum number of countries. And I'm sure at the regional level, most of the countries in South Asia are in line with what we've been seeking, Afghanistan and India. Therefore, the effort should be a, a comprehensive one, and we should include as many as possible. And definitely, we should single out a country that spoils. Pakistan should be singled out. A single out, a country that spoils our unity, that spoils the countries, the regional uh, stability and peace, and that stops integration and connectivity between countries. So you're saying that uh, a boycott of the SARC summit should be considered jointly? Well, by South if Asian we don't countries? see any success in the mechanism that we have created, the very basic reason for SARC is also regional unity, regional integrity and peace. If that SARC is sabotaged, if the effort of SARC is sabotaged, we must single out whoever that is. So that, that, so that means if the, all these countries, if, if India, Bangladesh and Afghanistan decide that we don't, we're not going to go to this SARC meeting. We are eight Islamabad. countries. Are we are eight countries. So you want more countries on We board. have to bring along most of them. In order to do that. In order to send a strong message that SARC belongs to eight countries, not to one country. Therefore, any country who sabotages, who hijacks this, this, this great mechanism that we have in the region, must be sent a strong message. So you're not ruling it out? You're saying bring more, more countries in the South Any Asian measure, board. any measure that brings peace, stability, and unity in this region should not be ruled out. All right. Well, that's a very significant statement you make there, Ambassador. Uh, thank you very much for speaking to us today. And uh, uh, once again, Afghanistan continues to be a strong supporter of India in these difficult times. As we've been saying from the beginning, you yourself have been a victim of terrorism and continue to be, unfortunately, for many, many years. Thank you for talking to us, sir. Most welcome.
Well, joining us here in the studio, Dr. Sanjay Baru, Mr. G. Parthasarthi and Praveen Swami. Uh, Dr. Baru, uh, to you first, because I know it was actually Mr. Parthasarthi who first mooted this idea of a joint SARC boycott, but I just wanted your thoughts on that. You heard what the Afghan ambassador was saying there. You think that's something that's viable in the, in, in the immediate term? You know, uh, Nidhi, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. in 2001, I actually gave a talk in the auditorium of the India International Center where the person who chaired the meeting was our former SAC Secretary General, Mr. Bhargava. No? And yeah, Khan Bhargava. 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 The topic of my lecture was wind up SARC. Now, it is true that over the last few years, we have tried to revive SARC, and particularly during UPA 1, there are significant efforts made at various summits with new initiatives like the South Asian University, etc. But I think we have come a full circle. And today, in 2016, I sincerely believe that SARC has no future if things continue like this. And I think there is an alternative which we launched along with Thailand and Myanmar in the late 90s called BIMSTEC. BIMSTEC yeah. uh, and we have a strong Lukis policy. We need to revive and strengthen our relations with West Asia. But frankly, I do not see a very hopeful future for India-Pakistan relations. What would happen though, Mr. Parthasarthi? Let's say India, Pakistan, uh, India, Afghanistan and Bangladesh decide, or one, whichever one country decides, let the SARC summit not happen. So, so what, what does that mean for Pakistan, realistically? That let, let, let me put it this way, uh, that we are not doing this in a vacuum. As Sanjay says, we have alternates to SARC. After all, we have the uh, quadrilateral of India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh. That's a separate, where we have an energy corridor and a communications corridor. Pakistan forbids any corridor for India through its territory. It's setting a bad example. Then, as Sanjay says, you've got BIMSTEC, which carries it further. Strategically, this whole area is a part of, dependent on the Bay of Bengal. So that's why it's called BIMSTEC, because it was originally Bay of Bengal. So I think, strategically, economically, this is going look, looking forward. What's happened in SARC? The uh, Pakistanis have not implemented even an existing free trade agreement. We had agreed that by uh, there was a SARC eminent persons group which recommended that by 2010 we should have a free trade area. By 2015 we should be a, a customs union and 2020 an economic union. Pakistan is determined to stop all this. Bangladesh has significantly spoken of that SARC vision beyond the year 2000. So, I, there is no merit, no benefit to us in SARC. But for Pakistan, it gives it an access into the uh, general South Asian family. After all, this is a family with a common history. So, you say they history. stand more to lose I said, out of it than India does? We, no, India no, has we, nothing to lose. No, because, we, because we've got the alternates. Yeah. And as far as Afghanistan is concerned, as the Afghan ambassador would be quite happy because our communications to them are, go, are through Chabahar. I mean, they're already it's been through Iran. It will be through Chabahar uh, much better. We're not. And the, it, that, and as, uh, the Afghans will be delighted with that because access to Chabahar prevents Pakistani blackmail on their use of Karachi. A quick question before I get Praveen uh, on this, Dr. Baru, which is that, okay, so Afghanistan may play ball, let's say, uh, and, and maybe Bangladesh. Would you think, you, do you really see any other SARC countries coming on board? Or do you think India should just stick its neck out and say, we're not, we're not going, the Prime well, Minister is not going? I frankly think, you know, the way in which uh, Pakistan has been pushing us since 2611, the time has come for us to tell not just our neighbors, but the big powers, you know, stand up to be counted. I mean, how long will India take this kind of a knock, this kind of a blackmail? Uh, you know, how, how long are we going to allow our friends to play double games? You know, they were, whether it's the Americans or the Russians or the Chinese or the Bangladeshis or the Sri Lankans or the Maldivians or the Nepalese, I think the time has really come for us to take some tough positions and tell the world, look, these guys are out to really damage us in a very significant way. And please choose your friends. It, it may isolate us in some parts of the world. So be it. But the important point is, all these neighbors 
lose nothing by this decision. They have no trade with Pakistan. But you know, you talked about this interesting thing about the, 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 the double game and you mentioned the US there and a lot of people are getting excited, Praveen, by John Kerry's statement to Nawaz Sharif today. But careful reading of it actually shows it's the US doing the same balancing act. Well, you know, don't use your territory, you know, uh, uh, for terror groups, but you've done a good job, well done, you know, you're fighting extremists. Everyone has to reduce tension in the region, but we're very, ba so, you know, angry about the Uri attack. So, you know, how, how should we look at the American position on this? Yeah, with all respect to the diplomats at the table, I mean, things like walking out of Sark is fine, but it doesn't actually fix our problem. And that Kerry statement explains exactly why. Uh, for all our talk about isolating Pakistan, the reality is that most of the world, rightly or wrongly, um, is not going to isolate Pakistan because they believe, again, rightly or wrongly, uh, that uh, isolated nuclear power with its back to the wall in a state of meltdown and entropy is worse than the status quo. The status quo might be bad, uh, but the options are even worse. And if we really think about it, most of our governments, not just you know this one and the ones before it, also seem to think that way because we've gone to considerable lengths to avoid precipitating some kind of crisis which might lead us into a situation that is more costly for us than the one we have today which is which is awful but we, we don't want to end up somewhere more awful this situation isn't going to end because we launch into some kind of you know high moral crusade about you know oh pakistan's horrible which everyone in the world agrees or because we go around saying that uh, you know isolate it which no one is going to do the situation is going to change when we have the capacities, um, when we have a systematic and thoroughgoing capacity uh, to deter Pakistan. And that is something which involves military and intelligence capacity building, uh, which is not something you can do when there is a big attack. And the, the question has to be asked that for the last two and a half years, um, you know, it's hardly a secret that there's going to be a bad attack at some point or the other. We've had ad nauseum discussions at every level about when the next, you know, big strike or the next 26-11 So you're is saying going this be. should have been thought out about what we could This do. should have been thought out. Uh, our special forces can't stage an uh, attack across the line of control now because Pakistani defences are ready. It is astounding to me that, you know, knowing that something like this can happen, we're sitting around at the at, at the highest I, levels I, of I government having panchayat S discussions Sanjay about it his now. Head. Pra Praveen is saying it's not that simple to isolate Pakistan. Look, you know, one official told me the same thing yesterday. Like you guys are talking about, you know, economic sanctions. It's not that easy. You're not going to find many countries willing to come forward and say economically sanction them. Now, what does isolation really mean? Look, we have exaggerated Pakistan's ability to use the nuclear blackmail by constantly referring to it as this nuclear power that we have to deal with. North Korea is a nuclear power. How many countries in the world deal with it? So How many of North Korea's of neighbors deal with it? No, no, may, may the I, world I, has succeeded in isolating may, North may, Korea may, because sir. the big powers, sorry sir, yeah. the United States has pushed the world into isolating North Korea. And Praveen is right, you are right that the United States is not pushing Pakistan. But how long are we going to sit back? I, I just want to quickly, uh, two line come back to those. But the reality is though that for years of sanctions on North Korea, despite years of South Korean protests over what is happening, the regime in North Korea is sitting Fine, pretty. That is not the not Chinese issue. are paying for I mean, it. And for the all point. the yelling. That is not the issue. I'm not saying the, the issue is, is. Issue is, is that Mr. you Pakistan. have to make Pakistan, the world know that at least in this region, we regard Pakistan as a pariah state. Yeah, that is the point. We are not talking of regime change. We are not change. talking of regime change. The point is this, and I agree with this thing. We have eroded our own intelligence capabilities consciously. We are now spending 1.7% of our GDP instead of 23 in defense. That's a different matter. But all that does not mean we should do nothing. For God's sake, we are facing the worst terrorism apart from Afghanistan from that neighbor of ours. We join Afghanistan, we join Bangladesh because the Pakistanis are playing games with the Jamaat Islami there. Let's put this creature in its place. And, on and the last point, what, let me tell you Nidhi, I've lived five and a half years in Pakistan. It's a fragile society. If we choose to do to them, let, let Mr. Modi give the orders, what they are doing to us, we'll make them, make them cry uncle in five years. Well, 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 I just want Praveen to comment on that. You know, because, I'm because it's, it's been suggested over the past couple of days that there can be a more unconventional way of dealing with this. Is that, is that talk? I, can it be done? 
I don't even want to speculate on what can be done because the government's not going to announce it certainly on TV. You know, I, I again am perfectly willing to accept that it can be done. But I asked this question yesterday and I'll ask it again now. Let's just say for the sake of argument that somebody walks into you know whoever's office tomorrow and says, give me a million bucks and I will blow up Hafiz Saeed for you tomorrow. Um, or, or you know some variant thereof. I, I, I would ask whether this actually solves your problem because, because the, the certain things flow from that. The day after Hafiz Saeed or whoever it is is blown up, you can be pretty sure that whoever succeeds him is going to plant bombs in your cities that there will be a reaction. Now if you have a domestic counter-terrorism system that is healthy, if you have police services that are healthy, if everything is where it should be, at least you can absorb some of those blows. Today you are not in those positions. Now, what always happens is That's that when something bad debate, happens, yeah. that, is that people start mouthing off, looking for these quick solutions. Just, just a minute. Okay. And I am not in a position. So, I has not lived in Pakistan. I have for five and a half years. I know every one of their warts and moles. The problem is we have not exposed those warts and moles or acted on them. Mrs. Gandhi did it once, and she did it very effectively. You need a political leadership. I hope we have that sometime to do it because we, enough is enough as far as I am concerned on terrorism against us by a dysfunctional neighbor. And let me tell you one more thing. Their internal contradictions are so bad with their military fighting in three provinces. It doesn't take much doing to put them in that well, place. Well, well, poor Praveen hasn't got a visa from Pakistan for years now, despite despite trying. He, but Sanjay Baru, uh, last word. I wouldn't give him a visa. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay Baru, on, on this point though, on who will come forward internationally to, to you know, unequivocally support us on this? That's a question. Even now, the U.S. is so she care. I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't care, Nidhi. I think the time has come for us to take a stand based on our national interest. Irrespective. Irrespective. Because the time has come to say enough is enough. We are not willing to deal with them as a normal state. This is a rogue state. We are not talking about change of attitudes. I don't think we should expect Pakistan to change its attitudes or for a regime change to happen. Probably there will be a coup and the army will take over Pakistan once again. We don't know. And right? fight, fight That's not people. the issue. Get the them issue, to fight their own people. The issue is we have done enough. I mean, even in the media, we have been so obsessed about this India-Pakistan relationship, there's another world outside. May I add one All more right. point about this nonsense on isolation? In the, I was in Moscow during the Bangladesh thing. Only the Soviets supported us. None of our numbers supported us. And we took a stand. That didn't Praveen. prevent Mrs. Gandhi I'll, from doing I'll what just say, I, it's time I'm, to try I'm something a, different. Uh, it is time to try something different, but I'm a little more sympathetic, I think, to both the last government and the, this one, and this one, on this dilemma. Look, what is, what is our strategic interest which has guided us? Our strategic interest is to grow as quickly as possible. Um, and the, the reality is that in the midst of a crisis, though you may deter Pakistan, may or may not, it's a, you know open check whether you will deter Pakistan from misbehaving in the future, it will have certain costs for us. And um, you're saying ultimately every government has to weigh what those long-term costs what are the going to be. Cargill did not affect our well, economic well, growth. Cargill did not affect I, our economic growth. I'm going growth to take this up. offline because I'm out of time. But thank you very much for coming in this evening and giving us your perspective on uh, what continues to be a big story. Tomorrow, Nawaz Sharif is going to be speaking at the UN General Assembly. India's closely watching to see just how crazy he's going to go on Kashmir. So expect uh, a lot of drama over the next couple of days. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Goodbye. What do you